Hi, my name is Curtis Welch of Tab Talks. Today our guests are going to show you how to make two holiday favorites, glazed ham and pineapple stuffing. We can promise you that your table and taste buds are going to pop with these new and creative recipes. Our culinary team is Valerie and Vincent, our VV as we call them sometimes. Together they make some of the most exciting meals around. Before we get started, let's have our culinary team share the ingredients with us. Thanks, Curtis. Here's the recipe for a classic glazed ham. A 9 to 11 pound bone-in smoked ham, 2 tablespoons of whole cloves, 2 tablespoons of margarine, 1 cup of packed light brown sugar, half a cup of honey, a third a cup of pineapple juice, and 2 tablespoons Dijon mustard. Now the ingredients for the pineapple stuffing. One cup of margarine, two cups of white sugar, eight shelled eggs, two 20 ounce cans of crushed pineapple drained, and 10 slices of Hawaiian bread. Can't wait to eat some. Yummy. like to welcome some very special guests to Tad Talk this evening. We have Val and Vincent. Welcome to Tabernacle Talks. Thank you. Thank you. And this evening, we're going to be preparing the glazed ham and pineapple dressing. Can you share some of the ingredients to prepare the glazed ham and pineapple stuffing? Let's start with the ham, Vince. Uh, you selected a spiral cooked ham with a bone in. How does this meat selection compare with a boneless ham? Well, when the ham has a bone through it, it is definitely more tender and more lean. Also, when you're done with the ham, you're going to be making sure that you can take the bone out, well, basically your leftovers of the ham, remove it from the bone. I mean, you want to definitely make sure you could use the ham bone for like if you wanted to do like crock pot green beans and ham, or you know, northern beans and ham. So, you definitely, that way, it is better than just boneless grain turkey. Flavor-wise, it definitely also adds to it. Also, the bone is conductor for heat, um, so therefore you'll get a nice, even cooking um, with the ham, and slow cooks with the ham also. So as it said, as it said, it'll help with the tenderness, and that's like it. Oh, that's great, uh, Vince. What type of prep is required with this type of ham? Well, first of all, and this is usually a lot of people don't pay attention to it until after the fact. There's a piece of plastic right here that goes over the bone, so you definitely want to remove that, get rid of that before going cooking with this ham. Some people will when making the ham. Sometimes they will use a roaster bag, but you can also submerge it in water halfway up and put aluminum foil over the pan and let it roast. Uh, set it at three, uh, 325. Oh, 325. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the butter, of course, because we want that to melt so everything can start mixing together. How much butter are you using? We do use Two tablespoons of uh, margarine. Okay. Or butter. So definitely, like I said, with the margarine, it's two tablespoons. Now I'm going to go to the brown sugar. The brown sugar is two or one cup. It's one cup. I split this up. This is a half a cup and a half a cup because I didn't want it to 
all of a sudden it's dug a whole thing and made a mess. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyways. So we're good? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to dump the first half cup. Take my bowl a little long. So how long have you guys been working together in the kitchen? Since 2014. Yeah. So you guys know kind of each other moves kind of. Here you go. Definitely. So I'm adding the other half cup of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the honey is next, definitely. That is a half a cup of honey. And we're gonna wait for that to melt a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna add in the uh, pineapple juice and the uh, pineapple. So the pineapple juice is a third cup. I've got to be careful so I don't spill it all over the place. Good job, good job. For now. Good. Okay. Then, last ingredient is the Dijon mustard, and that is two tablespoons worth. Yes, we are going to let those ingredients come to a boil. Vince Aroni, how long does it take to prep the glaze? Okay, the total amount of time for the glaze is 15 minutes. 10 minutes basically getting the ingredients together and mixing them one at a time. Then you gotta wait for it to boil. So it takes another that last five minutes to actually come to a boil. And like Val said before, that it is it has to settle. It's almost like making a gravy for something like that to thicken back up a little bit. Then it'll be ready for the ham. In terms of managing your kitchen, when preparing the meal for a large crowd. Is it better to prepare the stuffing or the ham first? We always prepare the ham first for a large uh, group because we want to cook it the day before because we want to get it sliced up, especially if we've got 200 people we're serving. Um, and then once it gets sliced up, we uh, the next day we actually make a glaze and put it on it and then we bake it. What temperature do you cook the ham? And do you require a special pan? Okay, the ham does cook at 325, and it is 15 minutes per pound, just like I was talking about earlier. And like I said, this ham, this size ham, is definitely going to stay in the oven at 325 for two hours. Total of two and a half hours, because the last half hour is the place that has to go on to it. Then you got to turn the oven heat up to the thermostat to the 400 degrees. Besides the ham, what other entrees would stuffing complement? Um, I've always used it traditionally um, with ham because my family only had it on Thursday or Thanksgiving and Christmas, so that was our tradition with it. But however, it would work very well with anything barbecue, like if you did bar chicken breasts, if you did bar uh, smoked pork, because of course the barbecue and the ham would complement each other. Can you talk us through the recipe while we watch? Oh, the glaze. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure since we were talking. Okay. So, 325, <laughs> and it's 15 minutes per pound. So this would definitely be in the oven, this size ham, for two and a half hours. But two hours, you basically leave it in there. And then at that last half hour interval, definitely want to put the glaze on then, but you have to turn the oven then up to 400. But you have to drain out all the juices so the ham glaze can definitely cure over the ham dry. So. Okay, Mr. Vince, what type of prep is required with this type of ham? What type of prep? Yeah. Um, 
really don't have any prep except if you want to make sure that you have the whole clothes and you want to start placing them around. You don't want to do too many in that because you do not want the cloves to take over the taste of the ham. Smoke this. So, but that's definitely remove the plastic piece and they would start asserting your cloves. Some people might even put pineapple rings on top of their ham, put a cherry, you know, in between the pineapples to give it that look, you know, but usually a lot of people like them with the cloves. It's a lot easier with this kind of ham, like you say, because it's already pre-sliced, um, so you can enjoy time with your family, which is the whole point of um, holidays. So. Vince, we noted that you said you were placing a whole clove into the skin of the ham. The ham. How does that infuse flavor? Well, the cloves do have a sweet taste to it. This is a working kitchen, guys. It's a working kitchen. Constantly working, constantly. Yeah. Now, the cloves do have a sweet flavor to it, so placing the cloves into the ham and letting it cook is giving it a sweet, salty taste. That's what it definitely is uses by but you definitely after you get done making the ham you definitely want to remove the whole cloves because then it will give a more sour taste as it says so right now i have the whole cloves like i said before you don't want to put too many so it doesn't overpower the ham so between the slices i try to just kind of put in a few i feel a lot it's up to you though. I'm sort of hard to be put in to the ham. So, I leave it sticking out just a bit so I can be able to grab them too. And that's not to take them out yet before I put on the place. Side. Okay. Going to hold it sparingly, make it to the ham and then to the pan. So what I'm going to do next, this is a little trick. People probably think this is weird, like, oh, you're going to use Coke. The Coke, when you put it over the ham, 20 ounces, will definitely reduce the sodium in the ham, so it's not as salty, and it tenderizes it even more. So, which pretty much a lot of people do know that Coke is a tender. And also, if they're making a turkey, you can use coke also because it removes like the strong bloody taste of the dark meat and the white meat makes it more juicier so it basically falls off the bone. It's definitely what coke does with it. So coke on that. Clothes are inserted and I'm going to fill it up halfway in the pan with water. Now, do you warm water, cold water, or does it matter? I use cold water, yeah. Or room temperature water, I can help too. Take a little bit of oil. Make sure it's the more shinier side. That one actually conducts the heat by some foot quicker. I bet you didn't know that when you use aluminum foil, you're supposed to put the shiny side against your food. Who knew? And if you want a little kitchen hack, you can ball up your aluminum foil and your kitchen scissors. You can sharpen your kitchen scissors with your aluminum foil. 
So while you're kind of enjoying all that, we've got for Thanksgiving and that. The great scissor sharp Nope. Put it into the oven for the first two hours. Okay. So here is the ham. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is let this set just a little bit, cool down, but I'm going to drain all the juice on this. So if you want to see what the ham looks like, also going to here. Yeah. As well, drain it off. Yep. Leave a little bit of juice at the bottom so it doesn't doesn't completely dry out. Doing that right. No, it's making me okay. Like I said before, you should go through, try to remove your whole clothes as much as possible so you don't have it just sitting on there. Which I'll show that on the other hand. Really? Like I said, I don't put too many on, so it doesn't overpower the ham at the same time. We want like you know, for both to eat each other. Got of those. Well, this is what the glaze looks like after it sets a little bit. It's thick enough because you don't want it just run right off of the ham. trying to stir it and kind of pull it down a little bit. All right. So there we go. That's what you guys can see. So you pour it on slowly. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here, that in. Then what I want to do, I'm going to keep it uncovered. Then I'm going to put it back to the oven. I'm going to turn it back up to 400 degrees. And for a half an hour. Yeah. Well, conventional oven, fine at 400, but you're in a equipment like this in a kitchen that's for a facility. It's definitely going to have to come down at least 45 to 50 degrees. So, all right. Last but not least, <laughs> up now is Val and her famous pineapple stuffing. All right. So, Val, can you tell us a little bit about this stuffing? Like how you came with this recipe, how long you've been making it? Sure. So, this recipe was actually passed down from my grandmother to my mother and then to me. So we only had it at um, Christmas and Thanksgiving. So throughout the rest of the year, we didn't have it. So we really were ready for it. Like, um, it's kind of funny as a kid, um, when I was eating this, I was like, oh no, I don't want this because it has eggs in it. And I was really weirded out by the texture. And then I just learned to love it afterwards. So <laughs> all my kids have loved this from the beginning. So. So can you kind of walk us through your ingredients and your process for making this wonderful pineapple stuffing? Sure. So um, what you want to have, you definitely want to have your um, sugar and your butter or margarine and your eggs. I like to use the Hawaiian king bread. Um, my, my mother and grandmother used white bread, but that was because this wasn't real popular by then. So I like my little sweeter. So I use the uh, Hawaiian king and then two cans of fresh pineapple. And basically what you do with this is you want to start off by adding your margarine. Okay. 
This is a cup of margarine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Much sugar. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Plastic. Yes, thank you. Bob, uh, so, did you list how much butter you was using? Um, this is a cup. Okay. So we're taking a cup. This is for ten servings. So this is a cup. This is two cups of, of white sugar. And of course, you want to cream this together. So you just want to crimp the together just like you would cookies. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. You want to get the eggs out next. I'm going to let Vince crack it for me. Lobster and okay. So we're going to use eight eggs. And the key to this uh, stuffing is the eggs. You need to add one at a time. And it's for the aeration. Okay. So you have nice fluffy dressing. Uh, please do it like this. Do you use the whole egg? Yes. Okay. Egg. Now I just have to make sure I don't get shelled. <laughs> You're next, Mark. Did you say he's an expert? I'm an expert. Yeah, an expert. Okay. Yeah. 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 And if you have grandchildren, you can have them count your eggs while you're doing it. Mm hmm. Almost count real quick. <laughs> So what is that you're using the the whisk it up or stir I'm it up? I'm just using the spoon. Okay. Um, you can use a whisk uh, if you're really strong like this. It works really well. Okay. For me, it's easier with the spoon. So it's however you want to do it. I'm gonna add two cans of the twenty ounce pineapple. So, so when you're mis um, stirring up and mixing, how do you know like the consistency should it be when it's done? What so it's I put pineapple in, but it's it's like this. So. Okay. So it's kind of light. Yes, it's very okay. light. Okay. Let you stir that up for me. Okay. That's almost reminds you of like pan pancake batter. <laughs> okay. Or crepes mm -hmm. actually. But yeah, it's awesome. This is going to be great. <laughs> okay, good. I want to see it. And then we're just going to moisten the bread crumb a bit, which is 10 slices of bread. Just keep it. Bread soda. Yep. So here's the product before it goes into the pan to be baked off. And then we just spray the pan very, very well. Good job. Okay, and then we're going to spread it out. Uh, 
Alright, and we're going to stick it in the oven at 350 on a regular oven. Uh, our oven, we're doing 325 for this convection. And uh, we're going to put it in there for an hour for a regular oven. And for us, it's going to be about 40 minutes. Okay, so this is definitely the finished product with the glaze on it for the ham. And this is your finished product with the pineapple stuffing. Sorry. That's right. Oh, oh. Looks great. Val and Vince, I know you guys have a very busy schedule, and I'd like to thank you on behalf of myself and the doc for participating at Tabernacle Talks. And we always give our guests the last word. Thank you for watching us make a ham and pineapple dressing. <laughs> and bon appetit. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on Tabernacle Talks. We really appreciate it.